the Moms Wear Natural Year Challenge. This is month three, food edition. Today we're talking about fats and oils. What's the difference between a fat and an oil? They're both lipids. All it means is fats are solid at room temperature and oils are liquid at room temperature. So let me ask you this intuitively. If you had a choice to put a mask on your skin, would you use Crisco or would you use an avocado, a mashed avocado? I'm guessing intuitively you'd say, well, I would go for the avocado. I don't want to put Crisco on my face. It's the same way with ingesting, nourishing, go with the whole food. And the bottom line to fats and oils is this. If it's naturally occurring, it's good for you. If it's man-made in a factory, synthetic, it alters the whole chemistry of the body and can be very disruptive. So that's the bottom line, but let me explain it the way that Dr. Katherine Shanahan explains it in her book, Deep Nutrition. This was very helpful to me and it might be to you. Basically, she explains that there are three types of fats and oils. The molecular makeup is polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and then saturated. Saturated is what we want to go for, and I'll show you in the Lego demonstration. This is saturated. There are no, no ways for the oxygen, for an oxygen reaction to occur. No way for the free radicals to get in there. Very solid, and that's what we want. Something stable and solid, and be, to cook with, you would want to cook with a saturated fat. Then there's mono, unsaturated. That's only one double bond that makes it less likely for oxygen to get in, but possible. And this would be, olive oil would be under the category of mono unsaturated. And then there's poly unsaturated. And this is the most disruptive, the most reactive, the most problematic because it is susceptible to heat reactions. Oxygen can get in there and it's kind of like TNT in a very small scale. It's very explosive. So the vegetable oils in their natural form perform a great service for the seeds the vegetables because in the spring when it warms up they're reactive they're responsive to that but they don't when you heat a vegetable oil and use any chemicals you're you're basically making it rancid so this is why cold pressed is better expeller pressed is better because it is no hexane is used no chemicals but there's still heat used when it's expeller so you want to explore how hot how hot does it get so for cooking your best bet is saturated fat. And the form that that takes for, well, it's several forms. This is expeller pressed coconut oil, a very good source of expeller pressed coconut oil. This is what we use most of the time. Butter, believe it or not, is very stable at high temperatures, very good to cook with. If you have lactose issues, then making ghee is preferable. And this is, we buy it and I also make it. And this simply is clarified butter, so that you're getting the milk solids out. But you'll notice that Kerrygold is from grass-fed cows. So the closer you can get to the way it's meant to be in nature, and that is eating grass for cows, the better quality butter that you'll have. So those are saturated fats that are good for cooking. Palm oil is also tropical oil, and you can see that this has been sitting in my pantry, so it's a little more solid. Next to the stove, it gets liquid. So this is a saturated fat. This is kind of an acquired taste, but it works for some dishes. So those are all good for cooking with. So olive oil, some people say it's fine to cook with, and in all likelihood it probably is. I tend to use it in salads and for dehydrating kale chips and keeping the temperature low for olive oil just because it is mono unsaturated. And of course polyunsaturated, I don't have any to show you, except that heat sensitive oil would be an example of um, cod liver oil. That has to be stored in the refrigerator. It's very sensitive to light for some of those same reasons. But it's a very good, healthy oil. Flaxseed oil is kept in the refrigerator. That can be added to salads and can be beneficial because the omega-3s. But overall, anything made in a factory you want to try and avoid. So I'm going to show you today some of the ways that I incorporate fat into our diet because nothing has helped our health more than putting good, solid, stable fat because 60% of the brain is made up of fat. And if you look at myelin, it looks just like coconut oil. Myelin is protective for the brain stretches. If you look at myelin, it looks just like saturated coconut oil. 
in its solid form. It looks just like lard. So when you look at animal fat, I know that this is hard to get used to, and it was for me because I was, came from a vegetarian background, but this is lard, and it looks just like Crisco. But this is naturally occurring and great for cooking because it's very neutral in flavor, and it's actually very fun to render. You just get some good quality pork fat from someone you trust, and then you render it down. I got this from a farm in Pennsylvania because I stocked up. These are some other ways that we incorporate coconut oil, another great oil and fat, into our diet. And one is I make little candies with coconut oil and cacao powder and a little bit of stevia, and I put them in the freezer and they pop out. Great way to have coconut oil. I also use, I make homemade yogurt and kefir, and kefir is the best way to say it, and that's the native way to say it. A lot of people say kefir or kefir. Kefir, that's using the cream, so it's a higher fat, and sometimes I'll mix in the yogurt, and then I make a, a dessert with it, with coconut oil and the kefir and cacao, and put it in the freezer, and the kids love it. Good quality eggs, farm fresh eggs. Look how orange the yolk is. That's how you know it's a good quality egg. And then, this is comes from Dr. Weston Price, the dentist who studied native people who were thriving health-wise. As soon as they got to the modern diet, and this is in the 1930s, their health degenerated quite quickly, especially their teeth decay. And that's what he studied. And he found that the butter, the good quality butter, just helped everything get into the body. So he called that the X factor. And this is the only supplement that I use. And the reason is, it's so, you only need a little. That in combination with the cod liver oil, he found was very effective because these native groups utilized the butter and, this, and when they were near the ocean, they used fish and the fish oil. So that's all I do for a supplement. They have that in capsule form. Otherwise, we just try and use as many good, healthy fats and oils as we can. And that's it for this edition of the Moms Aware Natural Year Food Challenge.